founders, what's going on? You guys know I love in-person events and they are back. The recording you're about to hear is from our most recent event where we had hundreds of founders come together, share intimate details, templates, KPIs, OKRs about their business, and it was something special, something special. We'd love to meet you in person. If you wanna see the next live events we have coming up via our schedule, the link will be down below in the description. If you're listening on iTunes, check this out on I, uh, YouTube. You'll see the links in the description, or you can just Google Founder Path or Latka next event. We'd love to see you in person. In the meantime, though, enjoy this recording. It's a good one. Our business is about helping people build great companies. And the reality is, is every single one of you out here has an operating system. The question is, what kind of operating system do you have? There are about five operating system types that are out there if you think about it. First of all, when you start a company, you've got this thing called an accidental operating system, right? So you've got papers and Excel and PowerPoints, and you're just trying to get your act together. And you're working like dogs, just trying to get, make things happen, right? And so a bunch of people are doing a bunch of different things, and you're probably not even using the same tools to figure it all out. And then all of a sudden, you're like, wait a second, we can't have people's names in one th document here and another document, another document here. Let's bring it all together. And that's called an intentional operating system. And then you're like, you know what? People have built businesses before. Someone's probably figured this out. Why are we sitting here creating all these tools when I'm sure someone's already done this? There's books on how to do this. There's tools out there. Has someone figured this out? And if you go out and you look, there are a bunch of books out there. There's E-Myth, right? There's Traction. There's The Great Game of Business. There's The Advantage by Patrick Lencioni. I'm trying to think of some other names that are out there. There Rockefeller is- Rockefeller Habits. Rockefeller Habits, Scaling Up. There are a bunch of books that are out there, right? And they kind of lay out how people have been doing this for decades and decades. So that's called a designed operating system, all right? And then after that, you come to a holistic operating system because some of the systems don't have everything in it. So as an example, EOS, which I'm very close to, really doesn't have anything about figuring out how to build value, right? Because the reality is in our industry, right, we're not focused, at least lots of us aren't, focused on EBITDA. We're focused on growing revenues, right? And so the value of the business is based upon the revenues, not the EBITDA. So get your arms around how you create value. And then the last type of operating system is actually what we're doing. We're creating an integrated operating system which takes all this information, all these tools, all these disciplines, and puts it all together. So it's almost easy to build a great company. Mark, before you go forward, go back one. I'm gonna sell you for a second. Go back two slides, just Ooh. to the re revenue growth graph so people, they're more likely to pay attention they know, uh, the, and at least I am, the revenue success of the business, right? So you get going in 2017, mm -hmm. small revenue. Where are you at today? So ARR as of today is about 10.4 million. Okay, so this is this graph is actually a little bit old, 10.4. And um, how much did you grow to before you raised, so fully bootstrapped? So we, we uh, raised money last summer, and at that point in time, our ARR was around four, yep. around four million. Yep, and then how much did you decide to raise? So we raised 20 million. Okay, that's the lead. Now let's keep going. <laughs> we'll come back to that in a bit. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do here is share with you um, this three playbooks, right? So number one, we're going to talk about community, how we leverage community to, to get going, um, how we activate people when they get into our system, and then the top metrics that Insight Partners looked at and fell in love with. And I'm going to share with you that they didn't actually understand our business as well as they loved our numbers, which is kind of a funny story. So how we use community. So we don't sell, we serve. And this is an important thing. And I want to talk about this a bunch of different times because there's so much I'd love to share with you all, right? But one of them is I believe we're moving into a new age of work, all right? And I believe that every single one of you to succeed in this new age of work, you have to have high trust relationships with all of your stakeholders, all right? So think about that. You have to have high trust relationships with all of your stakeholders. And obviously your employees and your customers and your vendors are all stakeholders. And ultimately society is a stakeholder because we're moving into this age where everybody pretty much knows what's going on. You can't hide anymore, all right? And so, um, so we don't sell, we serve. There are a bunch of books in the market about operating systems, and so people are aware of operating systems. The market is aware of what it is we're selling, big picture-wise. And there are coaches. There are thousands of coaches, and they're all salespeople for us, right? And in particular, we've been close to the EOS community, right? The book Traction, which I'll show in a second. And there are millions of copies of Traction out there, which is super cool. And there are, like I said, there are thousands of coaches, and there literally were, up until recently, about 1,000 coaches just selling EOS. And so we're very close to those folks. 
And Mark, what, so what, when you say selling EOS, what does that mean? Is the EOS a website? Is it a template? Is it a playbook? Yeah, so EOS is a book, and it describes the six key components of a business, and it teaches you how to master those six key components. So getting everybody on the same page in terms of the vision, getting right people, right seats, getting really good with data, getting really good at problem solving, getting really good at building out your processes. Remember the one of the slides just a bit earlier, right? Getting everybody on the same page with regard to who does what. I call it agreement-based leadership. And then ultimately getting, the title of the book in the US, traction. We call it getting smart shit done, right? But just getting traction. So it explains how to get strong at all six of those key components. Cool? So here is the slide that shows you the number of coaches. And as you can see, just in the EOS community, it went flat, grew, went flat. But then you can see the number of coach companies. And these are companies that all the coaches have coached. There's over 12.5 thousand companies out there. And if you saw the slide earlier, we've got 5,200 running on our software right now. Now the reality is, is for every coach company that's out there, there's about nine times as many companies that can't afford a coach because coaches cost like twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year. And our software makes it almost easy to master the tools without hiring a coach. And we're only 14 bucks a seat per month. All right, so talked about the book. So here you Wait, can go see. Back, go back to the book for a second. Yep. So, so no, go back to that slide. So do you guys, own, do you own this? So how we do, do you not own it. Yeah, so how does that work? Yeah, so we just pay a license fee to EOS to use the terms. So we pay 10% of our revenues to EOS to be able to use their trademark terms in our software. We got about seven trademark terms. So we're paying almost $100,000 a month for seven trademark terms right now. Cool. Huh? Should we, should we talk more about that or no? Yeah. Well, so people, I mean, it sounds like I'm gauging reaction. People say, well, that feels high. Does it feel high or is it worth it? It's one of the best investments. Oh, you're a customer. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that answers that question. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, what's interesting is um, at first all the clients were coming to us through coaches, but now we've got a bunch of companies out there running on us. They're aware of us. They're telling people about us, right? Um, I'll give you a couple punchlines here ahead of time. Um, net promoter scores go up and down because sometimes, you know, in software, everything's not working perfectly, but we're p typically between 50 and 70 on net promoter score, which in the SMB space is pretty damn good, right? I'm going to give you the really big punchline. If you use our system and you cascade it all the way down so everybody in your company is using our tools, including the feedback tool, our churn rate annualized is less than 1%. That's an SMB, guys, less than 1%. You know how many companies go out of business as a percentage in the SMB space every single year? Right? So what does that mean? It means it's sticky, but it also means we're helping a lot. Right? I've got emails from entrepreneurs saying, please don't super jack up your price of your software because we're so dependent upon you right now. Does this make some sense? Because we're in everything, right? Their meetings their goals, their processes, their feedback. We're involved in everything the company does to do work on the business. We're not work in the business tools, like we're not a marketing tool. We're work on the business tools. So all of our tools touch every single person in the company. So the good news is we're getting a lot more growth from the uh, non-coach side of the world. All right, so how do we activate? So this is really cool. So I'm gonna talk about we, uh, three users. If we can get three users in, during a trial period, we're almost at like 80, 90% conversion rate. We have world-class chat. Remember, I said we're moving into the new age of work, I call it the age of understanding, high trust relationships. We're there within five minutes, always with real people, answering your questions, doing everything we can. And we're going 24 seven as soon as we possibly can, because if you're an entrepreneur and you're working on building your business and it's 1 a.m. in the morning, my son's in my head right now, 1 a.m. in the morning, dad is redundant. All right. But if it's one o'clock in the morning, right, we gotta be there for you. So world-class chat, and then, um, and then ultimately we get them to expand the use of the tools. So that's how we do it. So I mentioned earlier, the conversion rates, if by, by the end of the trial, if we can get three plus people, if there are 10 plus people in the company at least, almost 98%. Five, remember I've talked about chat, so intercom, right, we're there for you, we understand what's going on, we've got real people, and, and and um, we make sure that we get, your, we get your issue solved as fast as possible. And one of the things that's really super important in my company is you care. We care about, that's our number one value proposition is we care. 
It's not innovation. It's making damn sure we're taking care of you and you know we're taking care of you. So if you go to Trustpilot as an example, we're like 4.7 and our people just like, man, this is one of the best customer service experiences I've ever experienced in um, SaaS, right? And then uh, support staff knows product well. It's really key. So I mentioned the 1% less um, churn, right? So getting people to use the tool. We do webinars. We do anything we can to help, our, our, help people master the tools. Wait, wait, go back real quick, because this is the first time you showed a screenshot of your actual product interface. This gives you as an idea of sort of what he's, you know, what 90 is selling uh, there on the right. Right, do you, Mark, do you want to talk anything a little bit about that maybe? You know, um, it's funny. Um, I'm going to be really just, you know, this is what we do here, right? We talk real honestly. So um, we've got a new tool we're working on right now, and I reached out to Meta Labs, and they came back and said, you know, can we, can we, can we help you with your user interface? And I'm like, you know, we just went through a whole process to update it. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, we think it could even be better. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> right? So we tried to make it super easy, super intuitive, super, super, super navigatable. We hear this from 95% of our clients. Every now and then there's someone out there who's, like, really critical. And we love that, right? We want to get better and better and better. But, uh, yeah, it's the, the UI is really super simple. People can get up and running on it. And we start doing demos like, oh, I get it. It's just all right there. Boom, you look, click on it, and it's obvious. It's a t meeting tool. It's an accountability chart. It's all obvious stuff. Is that cool? Yeah, so you're, you're up now to, like, $4 million in revenue. And the next slide, you're going to talk about when Insight reached out, like, what do they think about? So take us through that journey. Yep, cool. All right, so going up. Oh, went the wrong direction. So... There are somewhere, but in, just in the United States alone, um, and it depends on whose data you look at, so if the Zoom Info guys were here, right? But it's at least, our target target market is companies with 10 to 250 employees, and, um, and somewhere between one and three million s small, mid-sized businesses fall in that category in the United States. <laughs> it depends on who's, whose numbers you're looking at. And my, my research suggests that on average it's 40 people, right? And I think that the U.S. represents approximately a third of the sort of the, the, the world that's going to be interested in our product. And so you take that number times three. So let's just go in the middle and let's say 2 million times 40s, 80 million times three, 240 million people times 14. You guys can get the size of the market from that math probably, right? So it's a big market. Um, we've been growing at 5 to 8% month over month revenue. Um, to be uh, direct with you on... The, the, the data you saw earlier, we put our first price increase in last month, February. So we never increased prices. So we were 12 bucks up until, up until last month. So that's part of the reason our numbers are growing. Um, at, we have grown as far, much as they have in the last couple of weeks. Um, but we've been doing 5 to 8% month over month revenue growth for several years now. CAC payback period. It's, we got coaches. We don't even pay them a referral fee. You can get the sense for that payback period. And then we have our marketing, but on average our payback period is about three months. Well, the way to tap that coaching team, it sounds like there was a licensing fee you pay, right? Yeah. Does that come with the licensing fee? I don't have that included in the CAC. Interesting. It's good point. But, but what makes the coaches sell you? Because we make, make their things. clients' lives so much so easier. So got it. So they can make more on their services if they get their clients on EOS 90 software. Yeah, and I don't know this. It's a good, really good one. I'm just looking at one of my colleagues. Um, but it used to be that you'd have your clients, 80% um, of your clients would graduate. It takes about two years to teach someone how to master EOS. So about 80% would graduate. I'm pretty confident, if you think about our math, that we, in, we turn that graduation rate up to 90, 95%. But more importantly, it's just the, the, the whole experience is that much easier, right? You walk out of a session, everything's there. You just go back and you just have your weekly meetings. It's really easy to master EOS, in our opinion, using our software. And um, I remember old clients, before we got the software out, they'd go, God, I can't believe we used to do it this way, right? Because you'd have all these sheets up, you know, tear sheets and stuff up. You have to go back. I don't even remember what I wrote there. I can't read my writing. It was kind of a pain in the ass. So lesson, and then user churn is less than 7%, and our net um, revenue, uh, net dollar retention is 135%. So in SaaS, SMB, right, um, I can tell you that uh, I'm going to show, go here. Actually, I'll go later. But I'll, I'll give you a piece of insight no pun intended, on those ratios in a second. So we've already done that one. Um, this was, it's funny, Insight Partners. So 
they just reached out to us. We were not raising money. We had no interest in raising money. I'll get to this in a second. But they just reached out to us and said, we'd like to, um, to get to know more about you guys. K1 reached out to us. Battery reached out to us. A bunch of people started reaching out to us last year. And, um, and I said, look, we have no intentions of raising anything until we're at least at 10 million ARR. Because that's when I think, in my old world, that's when you started to be able to have conversations with almost anybody you wanted to, right? So that's where we were. Um, just back to the coaches, there's you know, 100,000 plus coaches out there, so it's a huge market. Um, already talked about the numbers here, net revenue retention, MRR growth, all that good stuff. CAC payback, we already talked about that. Um, user churn, um, talked about that, less than 7% um, annualized, and that includes, you know, we have a lot of small companies. You can get into our software for 14 bucks, right? So there's a lot of small companies in there, there's a lot of one or two offs. Um, but, uh, but generally speaking, that's, uh, you know, obviously less than close to, it's, it's been averaging less than half a percent per month for years. Um, so why'd we, why'd we raise the money? Um, I self-funded it for the first, you know, three, four years. Um, I didn't want to, I could do that. I didn't want to give up um, any equity. So you own 100% before that, basically. I, I had sold some to my colleagues okay. and, um, and, and some, some customers and things like that, but yeah, so I was at 80% up until Insight came in. Um, only had one full-time employee up until, I want to say, 19. Um, and then all the rest of us, including me, I was an EOS coach for years, right? So I got in there. I had the idea back in 2005 sitting on a bunch of boards. And I'm going to use an expression that someone shares, and it's, it's crude, so apologize. But I would go to these board meetings, and I'd... I'd I'd invested in 100 companies. I built a business that made our shareholders over a billion. I'm like, guys, this isn't that complicated. And I thought it was me, right? But every time we'd go to a meeting, I'd say, you got to do these things, these things, and these things. These are the right disciplines. They'd say, yeah, 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 yeah. They'd smile fuck me, is the expression, right? <laughs> and I got tired of it. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to create software. It's going to be easy and obvious. And that was 2005, right? So it's a long road, right? But I was the, uh, so I was this coach because EOS had this book. It was pretty popular. There were 35 coaches. They were growing. I'm like, I'll join the community if they're not going to do the software. They said, software's too tough. We're not going to do it. And that's the story. So I had a, still to this day, have a fractional head of marketing. Um, coach support, we're full-time now. Pretty full-time, actually. We're not totally full-time. Data is fractional. Engineering's fractional. Finance is fractional. Talent, all fractional people. Now, what I got was really, really good people, right, that I could afford. So it was half cash, sometimes all equity. But, um, but I've got people that honestly cost, you know, $200,000, $500,000 $500, and more a year to support the journey up until now. And so now we're doing hiring full-time people. We're actually at 50, and we're going to 100 this year. And we're getting everybody full-time. And, and so wait, why is that? So to me, what I heard was super resourceful, found the talent you needed to get, contract model, very similar to John Darbyshire and how he's doing Smart Suite. But now you want to move and, and basically increase your FTEs from 50 to 100. Why not say it's like super rational, conservative, you know, milk it for you can and use contractors? Um, well, because we think that we can grow. Well, first of all, um, contractors aren't cheap. And so what happens is we know that we're going from needing them two days to three days to four days, right? And so right now I've got two senior guys in marketing and together they're costing me over a half a million. Does that make sense? So, and data, we've got, there's, we, part of what we wanna do is make data a superpower for all of our clients and so we need a full-time head of data like ASAP. There's so much opportunity for us on the data world. And so, and then talent, right, with growing and then, and, and then so you just start to all of a sudden and you just and then as the team gets more and more full time, they want their colleagues who are supporting them to become more and more full time because we're all running as fast as we can run. Does that make some sense? All right. Um, pursued by a long list of VCs. I mentioned that earlier. Didn't raise. We talked about that. Um, Insight gave us forward credit um, given the, the consistency of our growth in paying companies, paying users, MRR and churn. Um, I've already mentioned uh, these things, uh, and um, this is, we're proud of this, can't, can't lie. Uh, Jeff Horings, who the managing partner of Insight, said we had the best KPIs he's ever seen in SMB.
That's a cool thing. That's a cool thing. Thanks. Um, what they didn't see was they fell in love with our numbers, but they never really wanted to understand our vision and where we wanted to go until after they got in there. And now they see it, and now they believe in it, and now they're, now they're really, you know, they're stepping up and they're gi giving us a lot of support. But it was kind of funny because it's like good news, bad news, right? It was like, oh man, we love your numbers. These are amazing. Let's just do it. And it's like, wait a second, where are you guys going? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And it's like, okay, all right, let's do it. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I got for you. So just to be clear, before, before, before we wrap and before we clap and all that jazz, so um, you, you, you raised, um, are you comfortable sharing, was it all equity or is there a part secondary? It was all equity. Okay, it's all on the balance sheet. It's You're all on the balance sheet. It. Got yep. it. And um, how was the first board meeting? <laughs> Great question. I got to give it how to you. How was the last one. board meeting? Is probably the better question. But how well, was the first we, one? We've only had one. Um, so we rate all of our meetings. It's what we teach, right? So we rate our meetings on a scale of one to ten. And um, so uh, Chris and I, and then we've got a, another VC uh, friend of ours who's also a coach, plus a friend of mine who runs a, the best Myers Briggs teaching company in the world's on our board. And then we brought Insight, one person from Insight. And uh, everybody gave the meeting a nine or nine and a half, except for Insight, and they gave, it a, they gave it an eight. And they gave it an eight because we didn't give them all the numbers, the detailed numbers that they wanted to see. And, and I'll tell you why. It's because I thought the board meeting was the appropriate venue for them to hear our long-term vision because they'd never asked for it. And I want to make damn sure going forward they understand why we're doing all the things that we're doing. And so they gave us an eight. <laughs> Guys, Mark Abbott with 90. Give him a round of applause. Thank you.